So tell me, uh, for me, uh, at a personal level, what happened in 2016, November 8th, was the biggest tragedy I have ever experienced. It's true. Like many, many people in this country, I, I couldn't believe it. And uh, I think that your documentary brings us uh, closure in a way. It's a way of uh, not only to understand what happened, but also it's kind of a therapeutic, like kind of a therapy session yeah. with all the details. So I feel good. Can you explain a little the process? And if I'm writing what I'm saying, I'm just giving you, feed, feeding you some ideas sure. to talk about. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, what, what was interesting Guy, about this, um, you know, the, the, the outcome of the election to me was a huge surprise, as you well know, to a lot of people, um, especially people who claim to be experts, pollsters, people in the media, people in politics, uh, all of them were caught off guard and had spent considerable months and weeks laughing at Donald Trump instead of challenging him. Um, the Clinton campaign thought they had the election in the bag. They uh, behaved as though there wasn't a huge amount of work for them to do. And a whole range of people were very surprised by the results. And it struck me that in 2017, a lot of people would be wanting to get to the bottom of this. But because the Trump presidency hit the ground running and continued in just the same way as he behaved, during the presidential campaign, you'll remember people saying, oh, well, maybe he'll be become more presidential when he gets to the White House. Well, of course, that didn't happen. And so there was a daily deluge of information and news and craziness, which meant that the normal reflection on what had happened in 2016 just didn't happen. And the more I sat there and thought, well, surely there's going to be this inquiry. It never really materialized and that's what made me think i'm going to go about making this film and even when we started honestly i expected a lot of the time to be told by interviewees well i get asked this question all the time and most of them said well i've never been asked to speak on this subject so i had a sense fairly quickly that we were probably onto something a little different so um as i often say if a game show host becoming the most powerful person on the planet does not deserve some serious investigation. I honestly don't know many things that do. You know, I think you're totally right. I think that uh, through the four years that we suffer with this man, it's, uh, I mean, uh, I remember rushing from the office to watch CNN at home because I wanted to, I was so, uh, how would you say it, uh, so concerned about what he would be doing the next morning or the next night, uh, that I was always uh, on the edge of, you know, knowing now that Biden is part of, you know, is running this country, everybody or the majority of some people are, are feeling more at ease and uh, they can go on with their lives knowing that there's someone with a brain. So I don't know, what do you think of all of this? And, and if you think that he will come back? Well, I think it's, uh, listen, I was corrected the other day because I was speaking with Joe Trippi, one of the interviewees on the film. And I yeah. said something like, oh, you know, he's not going to run again in 2024. And, and Joe Trippi correctly put, pulled me up and said, hold a minute. Everyone said this in 2015. Oh, he's not going to run. He's threatened to run for years on end, uh, kind of as a publicity uh, act. And of course, he did announce in 2015 and everyone in 2015 spent their entire time laughing at his candidacy, meaning that he was never challenged in the way a, a, a political candidate ought to be straight from the start. He was treated as entertainment. And most people said this is a bit of fun, but he'll be gone by Christmas of 15. And sure enough, he wasn't. And then he was still around. And as Molly Ball says in the film, she went he went through the Republican field like a buzzsaw. And suddenly he was their, their nomin nominated candidate. And it's worth mentioning that the Clinton campaign thought this was a good thing, that Trump's hanging around the Republican field would embarrass everyone, make them all look stupid and be his con sort of con toxic effect would be good for their campaign. Uh, clearly, that was another terrible judgment on, part, on the part of the Clinton campaign. Um, and so in, in answer to your question in 2024, if we, if we have to learn, this is what this film is all about, it's about learning about what happened, whether you like Trump or hate Trump, you need to watch this film to learn how on earth he got elected. And because it is not impossible. If you don't think it's a great idea that he gets reelected in 2024, you need to be paying attention because frankly, on current trajectory, it's not impossible. And it's really worth remembering that nobody thought his candidacy was serious in 2015 until it was too late. 
I think his legacy is uh, how to how to use people's fears to run a society by manipulating the news and then playing with uh, bigotry because in moments of a <clears throat> financial crisis or unemployment, we, we look for scapegoats. And he did that game very well. And now we see European leaders doing the same like he did. And it's very scary because even if he doesn't become the next president, hopefully not, there's a, a, a Trumpism, the ideology of this this person, which I really hate. I can give my opinion because it's an entertainment sure. show and they like it. And uh, yeah, I really hate him. And um, yeah, so if you can talk about Trumpism and the danger of imitators that are, you know, there are many in the world, the Hungarian leader, I don't know, even in Spain, there are a couple of neo-Nazis, you know, using his language and everything. Look, the, the, the idea of the demagogue going around making massive promises to populations in elections is old as time. It's happened forever. It'll happen again. It's just a question of who is practicing it at, in, the, in the moment. And that was Trump in 2015. He was telling people, if you don't like the way your life is today, the one thing you cannot do is resist change. Change is a value proposition, works in our own lives. It works in politics. As I've said many times before, if you don't like your old job or you don't like your house or something about your relationship is wrong, the one thing that you cannot do and expect any improvement is nothing. And that's precisely what Donald Trump did. He came along and he and he appealed to people that were having a tough time in life and promised to he cared about these people more than anyone ever had thought about them before. They felt addressed. They felt uh, uh, cared about. And don't forget for people to feel not cared about that is always part of a part of negligence on uh, you know that that condition takes a while to 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 settle in and so someone has to take responsibility for people feeling ignored and and disenfranchised but once they are in that state they can be appealed to this is what happened in Brexit in 2016 um a whole lot of people who were very tired of the political class who felt ignored who felt immigration had, had adversely affected them, were, were susceptible to a message that we can come along with some daft promises and fix your life. Um, so when Brexit happened in the middle of 2016, uh, some months prior to the US election result, I was certainly uh, on the record as saying it's not impossible the same thing could happen in America. For the same reason, you're essentially offering change and you're offering to remove all kinds of systems which you see are which you see as the problem i was a remainer but i will always say the eu brought a lot of this on themselves by their own appalling behavior and waste and lack of democracy and everything else so you can't just say oh it's the fault of the people that came along and took advantage of disenfranchised voters the eu had set the conditions for a demagogue or in you know which by the way Boris Johnson was part of that campaign to come along and make the make the exotic promises um it was on it was on the frailties of the EU that it was possible to make those promises and a similar situation happened in America in 2016 and the election of 2016 that Donald Trump was able to take advantage of people who had been ignored um and did so very effectively and those these are the lessons people have got to learn how was the financing of the movie in what sense it was it easy for you to get all these uh, the finance to the movie of who was behind and uh, uh yes it was it. easy to get the yeah. finance of the movie because i financed it myself and i uh i i did so with enormous discipline and care uh we were very careful in how we spent our money we spent a remarkably small sum of money money to produce a film that looks as good as it does and part of the, our luck on that was, uh, you know, we we did our post production production during COVID, um, and a number of the outstanding creatives who would normally have been busy and overbooked were suddenly available um, to work with us, and you know, gave us favourable terms. So um, that's how we, you know, were able to turn this thing around. Um, a by not having tons of extraneous people, but B. Uh, working to uh, working with some of the best people in the business who luckily were available for us. I, I want to know if you think that uh, misogyny play a role in uh, 
Trump getting into the White House by the people hating Hillary Clinton. I don't understand why people hate, hated her. Well, a lot of people did hate her, and I think it's I think yeah. there's far more to it than misogyny. I think you know she made some terrible decisions, um, no question about it. Uh, I'm also sure misogyny paid a part of it with certain people who just won't vote for a woman president. You know, polling will have you believe there are certain subsets of the electorate that you know for cultural reasons won't have uh, aren't aren't uh, inclined to vote for a woman, uh, but. She'd also made some terrible errors of her own. Their campaign made some appalling decisions. You know, the FBI uh, uh, mistake was a mistake of Hillary Clinton's. Um, yeah. They chose not to involve her with the media. They largely ignored the media during the campaign. Um, I think they thought Trump was such a ludicrous proposition that they never really understood the threat that he that he posed. Um, so I think there's a great deal more to it than saying. Hillary Clinton was uh, is, is a misogynist issue. I, I, I think that's far too simplistic. Uh, one, uh, one other thing. Uh, I think that the, the right in this country has dedicated a lot of energy for the last 26 years or 27 to destroy her image. I mean, there's been, uh, don't you think, the, the persona that they have created I mean, Hillary Clinton was a monster for, you know? Yeah, I mean, look, everyone, if we're totally honest about this, on both sides of a political campaign is doing one, is doing a version of that. So I think Hillary Clinton would accept the, the old phrase that politics is a contact sport and it's very unpleasant. Um, you know, I, I, if you don't like the Clintons and you see them leave the, the White House bankrupt and then suddenly become incredibly wealthy, as they have done, uh, you know, that is a, a, a that is a something that got a lot of mention uh, in within in interviews during the during the uh, course of filming, you know, Bill Clinton's own behavior happened largely before the Me Too movement existed, but I think it didn't in any way help uh, Hillary Clinton. Um, and uh, so I do think there's a lot more to it than than uh you yeah. know blaming it all on the right i think i think the clintons are you know they're an acquired taste and people frankly love them or hate them yeah uh, let me ask you what motivates you to do to be a filmmaker like you did uh, children of the snow land and uh, other titles uh, what uh, what drives you into this well this is it uh, this this film was of interest to me because um I have worked on campaigns. And so I do know the business of politics. Uh, I worked on campaigns in the United Kingdom. I worked on campaigns around the world. Um, and I do understand the basics of how a campaign is managed. Um, and I was interested in how this lady, Hillary Clinton, who was, and I think many say it in the film and were right to say so, one of the most qualified candidates of all time uh, in yeah. terms of experience, in terms of knowing the business of politics, uh, in terms of having the intellectual capability and sense of duty and all that good stuff. Um, there's no question she was qualified. And yet someone so qualified and so well versed in the business of politics ran a campaign that was as bad as hers. Uh, that interested <laughs> me. <laughs> it also interested me how somebody conversely, who was the exact opposite Donald Trump, uh, without the intellect, without the curiosity, without the record of public service, uh, without the understanding, frankly, of government and how it works, was able to come along and essentially uh, have a hostile takeover of Washington, stage a hostile takeover of Washington and win. Um, I've very often described a general election as a marketing competition. It is It favours the person who can tell their story the best. And that is a separate skill to leadership. But if you're able to t tell a convincing story, tell and sell why you would be the president better than your opponent in a presidential election, you're most likely to win. And unfortunately, Hillary Clinton's skills aren't in marketing, they're in leadership and politics. But the nature of, a, of an election is that Donald Trump got to show his skills first, and she never got a chance. So, yeah. um, you know, the, I think history for a long time will question how she managed to lose it. But also, it is worth worth saying she was coming effectively in as a third term Democrat, but after a very successful two term presidency by Barack Obama, 
which was a massive challenge for her, no question. Yeah. And so her chances of success, frankly, were very small right from the start. Um, but it, it is possible George H.W. Bush became a third term Republican after Ronald Reagan's two terms. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, there was there was the, the nation and the world, frankly, as you say, not just America, but other countries um, were in a mood for teaching the political class a lesson. And unfortunately, one thing Hillary Clinton is very often uh, recognized as is being a member of the political establishment. So she was up against it.